Back on Friday, we got a new introduction into Call of Duty World War II, something that was added in almost a month into the game, and it's something that will have support for the rest of at least the life cycle of World War II, potentially even further, but as for how long that will go, well, I guess we have no idea, and it comes down to fan engagement and how it is received as a mode and how popular it becomes. That being ranked play within World War II. Now, this was something that a lot of people were really excited for, especially upon launch. I know the competitive community was definitely looking forward to it. Some of you guys may be very much so looking forward to it and now have the access to it, but it was held off until Friday, and come Friday, everybody jumped on that was interested in it and got their first taste of their placement matches and then the ranking system and everything like that. So today, I'm gonna give you guys a brief little rundown of everything you might need to know about that, but also, we're gonna be talking about what they won't tell you about ranked play in World War II. So, hopefully you guys enjoy this. I know it might not necessarily be everyone's cup of tea. Competitive is a lot more engaging more so than just say a casual run through of a map or something like that and of everyone that either watches or plays Call of Duty not everyone subscribes to that specific niche environment but I've always been interested in it admittedly Black Ops 2's league play was probably some of the most fun times I've ever had in Call of Duty not just because Black Ops 2 is probably one of my favorite titles if not my favorite title to date but regardless it's something that I'm definitely interested in it hopefully you guys are as well and if so maybe you can do a little stream series because I'm hoping to try and start streaming once again for for you guys on the channel, maybe a little Road to Master series if that's something you'd be interested in. Feel free to let me know down there in the comment section and down below. But some of the basic stuff before I jump into the lesser known things and some stuff that is not publicly advertised about ranked play, it's essentially supposed to be where the public can take place in essentially the MLG rule sets and you can play competitively. So you'll be playing a plethora of different maps in Search and Destroy, Capture the Flag, and Hardpoint with the esports settings enabled, and it's only a 4v4 mode rather than the 6v6 that we have in standard regular public matches and if it was there 9v9 for ground war but of course that's not in the game at the moment and if you win you'll earn points moving you up closer to that next ranking and progression in the tiered systems and if you lose you'll lose points and slowly regress backwards so you kind of have to try and even it out and hopefully string together some wins to keep them going the seven tiers in ranked play as of right now are bronze silver gold platinum diamond and masters and once the players are in masters the top 100 players by the tier points will be recognized in the pro tier at the end of the season. So there's also going to be cool loot for those rewards and different placings as well. So if you guys want to jump in and try and get some cool stuff, feel free to. But of course, also make sure you guys do not back out of games if you're, say, getting stomped or something. Yes, it does kind of suck, but you're just going to have to take the loss. Otherwise, you're really going to hurt your teammates and you can also get probation. So if you have a first offense of leaving, it'll be 15 minutes. If you guys do it twice, it's 30. Third offense is 45 minutes and so on and so forth. But that said, that's the basics. That's the gist of it. It sounds very straightforward and it is very straightforward and rather simple. The gameplay nature and everything, though, is a little different than that of just regular public matches. But as for what else there is to know, there's actually quite a bit. One of the big things is that I'm seeing a lot of people asking, why is it only solos right now for Season 1? And it's something that is a valid question, because you could jump in immediately to having played teams within the ranked play and league play in Black Ops 2, and with that being the comparison everybody always uses, because personally I think it was so well done and so well executed, but nonetheless it is the thing that is the standard comparison, why are we only playing in solos? Well, that's because Sledgehammer is taking matchmaking and the ranking system and they're trying to make it as accurate as possible so when you take a look at MMR systems it's something that is very intricate and of course has to take into consideration a lot of different variables and determining exactly how good a player is is something that takes a long time to do and while 10 placement matches is usually what it will take to air quote define what sort of player in ranking you are it's not something that is always the most accurate and therefore your rank is often more so solidified over time. Now the only problem with that is of course you already are at a base rank after 10 matches so you could theoretically be a diamond player but get placed in platinum or gold and then have to work your way up by stringing together a ton of different wins so it doesn't necessarily equal out exactly what it is. But over time since it is season one here at this and everybody is only solos it allows for a more individualized stat tracking and basis so that whenever you go in and play with a party with a team of four it gives a more accurate representation because the system and the MMR has a more accurate representation and definition of each player individually. You could have three players from, say, Optic or FaZe or whoever the big esports teams are that you care about in the COD competitive scene. You could have three players from a professional level and then teaming up with a 
Timmy No Thumbs, and they'd still dominate and crush everything. Therefore, that player that is not as skilled as those pros would still be getting carried, in a sense, to a higher ranking. So after those 10 matches, they could be masters, they could be diamond, but not everyone might be on that level in that team. So with an MMR system that has a base of a season one, or at least the majority of season one as a solo ranking only, it gives a more individualized underlying base to that system so that it more accurately depicts the amount of players that you'll be stacked up against for competitive nature and also for an accurate ranking as a team. So while it kind of does suck that right now we can't play with friends in a party, it's something that in the longer term will help make your games a lot more competitive in a sense where you're matched up with even ranked players. And so maybe you don't go up against somebody that is technically way better than you, but is held down because of somebody on their team. So that's one big thing that I really want to get out there. It's something that has definitely been a major topic of discussion that I've seen a lot. So I wanted to clarify a little bit of the reasoning, or at least what I would imagine some of the reasoning being here for this. But but nonetheless, it's going to move us over into the next thing, that being that stats count for your public score, your win-loss, your KD, all that kind of stuff. It counts even though it is a separate entity in the multiplayer system. Technically, they should not be connected because one is competitive and played entirely different than a public match would be, and one is something that everybody really sees no matter where you play. So whereas Reg plays a little more exclusive, for whatever reason, a lot of the stats are still tethered. Now, that's something that might be fixed here in the next coming days to weeks as little fine tunings and adjustments are made to ranked play. We already saw some fixes coming in the way of wins counting as losses for your placements and that's something that has been addressed already. A little bit of a hot fix update has come out for that. Whether or not it fixed all those issues, not entirely sure, but I think the stats will also be once again untethered from the public match category and classification as well. Now the next thing is that there's no XP right now given for ranked play, which again, if we talk about this being two separate entities makes a ton of sense and is totally fine in how it is, but it's something that previous versions that we've had with ranked playlists and everything throughout a couple of different titles, they have had some sort of XP granted with them. And I'm fairly certain Black Ops 2 actually had a decent amount of XP with it, but I could be wrong on that sense because I played almost all of my League Play grind after I hit Master Prestige, so that was all I did for the next like eight months or so after I hit Max and Multiplayer. But nonetheless, that's something that is still kind of on the fence that some people want to see some XP, some don't. But again, if we talk about it in a sense that it is two separate entities, I totally understand why it's not in there at the very moment. But if you're wondering why you haven't really been ranking up, if you've been playing ranked play, that's why. Now, kind of teetering back and forth again on a little teeter-totter here with this, is that the next thing we want to talk about is that you can actually get supply drops from ranked play. Now, this isn't anything in which you can attain them via the roulette on the end of the match or anything like that, but instead, if you have contracts active, you can end up earning those rewards. Contracts carry over into ranked play, not just necessarily into the public playlist that we have, such as Team Deathmatch, War, Domination, all those kind of game modes. These contracts will then carry over into ranked play and so if there's social score, double XP, double weapon XP or supply drops you're looking for, you can still crank those out and progress your rank at the same time. So a nice little dual sort of situation here in which once again if we kind of take a look back at the last two, it's weird because we can't really see if it's distinguished as its own entity or if it's still something that is tethered in some way shape or form to which this picking and choosing stuff gets a little confusing. But nonetheless that's going to move us over into the final thing that I want to mention here today with this and this deals a little bit with the camos because one of the big things that everybody absolutely loved back in Black Ops 2 whenever I played League Play was the camos because it essentially showcased almost a status of how far you progressed within the game, how much you grinded it out. It's almost like a certain prestige factor in itself. If somebody had diamond snipers or diamond assault rifles, it was just something you wanted to show off. However, in World War II's ranked play, you can't get any of the higher tier camos on your guns. Even if you have them unlocked, they're still locked within the camo selection. Very similar to, if not identical, to what is happening within custom matches. You can't get any of the bronze, copper, diamond, and gold camos that are available as those, once again, higher tier progressions for them. All you have available are those headshot camos, which in all honesty, while of course I like that they're era specific and they're nothing too flashy to take World War II out of context, they're not really all that great in the sense that I would sport every single one of them. Maybe one or two here and there, but 
I personally would have liked to have my gold, my diamond, my chrome when I eventually get to that, so all these sorts of camos are unfortunately locked for ranked play. But that said, that's where we're gonna wrap it up here, I think, with this one. Give you guys a rundown of five different things that you might not necessarily know too much about ranked play and jumping in, they might help you out in some way, shape, or form. And I think one of the big ones that I'm glad we got to talk about was why season one is solo only, why matchmaking is prioritizing solos rather than allowing parties. Parties will be coming at a later point in time, but as for right now, once again, it is detailed for that reason so that it can create a more accurate and more fine-tuned matchmaking system moving forward. So that said, parties will be unlocked soon, but for the time being, it is only solos and everything else. Hopefully it was some cool information you guys enjoyed as well. But that said, let me know your thoughts down there in the comment section down below. Love to get your thoughts and feedback. If you guys enjoyed the video, make sure you drop a like down below. And of course, if you guys are new to the channel, make sure you guys subscribe to stay up to date with everything we have here regarding Call of Duty World War II. Tips, tricks, news, information, leaks, best class setups, updates, all that good stuff we got you covered here up on the channel. So if any of it interests you, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss a single thing. And finally, if you guys want to follow me over on Twitter, that's the best place to get connected with me outside of YouTube, but practically live on Twitter. So if you guys want to strike up a conversation, ask me a question, whatever it may be, link is down there in the description below. But all that said, now to the way, hope you guys have a fantastic day. Thanks so much for watching. My name is Espresso. I'll see you guys later. Take care and peace.